Good morning. Good morning. So glad that you guys are here in the living room with us today. Um, I hope that you have been enjoying these lessons about the armor of God. Um, we're going to review them today and talk about one practical lesson where someone wore a real armor and see what that looks like compared to someone else who wore the armor of God. So I'm excited that you're here with us. We're going to start by singing Jesus Loves Me. Y'all ready? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Okay, so let's also quote Psalm 23 together. Um, if you are at home and you know it, um, quote it with us. And if you are still learning it, you can grab your Bible and read along with us. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's so good. Okay, so let's review. We're going to do the all the pieces of the armor of God. So how do we start with the pieces of the armor? What goes here? A helmet. Helmet of? Truth. Helmet of? Salvation. Helmet of salvation. Very good. What goes here? The belt of truth. Very good. What goes here? Breastplate of, Breastplate of righteousness. What goes here? The shoes of preparation of peace. The shoes, yes, very good. The gospel to be spread with peace. What is in this hand? The sword of the spirit. Well, okay, the sword of the spirit is in one hand, and what's in the other hand? The shield, the shield of faith. Very good. Okay, and so as we've been talking about this armor, we know that this is the armor that Jesus wore. We know that when we belong to Jesus, that this is the armor that he gives us to wear. We know that the Bible tells us that we have everything that we need for life and godliness. Okay, so everything that we need to obey God has been given to us through his spirit, which he has put into our hearts. And so we are protected with our armor and we are able to go out and share the gospel because of the armor of God. Okay, it allows us to go do that. So I'm going to read a story to you about someone who trusted in their physical armor and someone who trusted in their spiritual armor. Okay, and I want you to see how the story turns out. Jude, do you have a question? What should like um, That's, that's true. And so we're going to see how there was somebody in the Bible um, and how he went forward. And so he advanced and that helped to prepare the God, that helped for peace to go forward. And I want you to listen to the story today. So we've all heard the story of David and Goliath, right? Okay. David and Goliath, we know what happened, but I want to read to you some of the details that you might not always think about because we know about David and his five stones we know that he slung the slingshot, right? And he got Goliath in the forehead and Goliath died. But I want to read to you what happens before that they come and they meet together. Um, so we're going to be starting, we're going to be in 1 Samuel. We're in chapter 17 and I'm going to read verses 4 through 7. So listen really carefully. And there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gaul whose height was six cubits and a span. Okay, so he was almost 10 feet tall. So he's as tall as our ceiling, okay? He had a helmet of bronze on his head. He was armed with a coat of mail. So he had, it was like a chain link and it was all over him. The weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. Okay, so he was covered with 5,000 shekels of bronze. He had bronze armor on his legs. 
He had a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and his shield bearer went out before him, okay? So Goliath is clothed in this massive armor, and he even has somebody, his shield bearer, the one who holds his shield for him, going out in front of him, okay? Do you think that Goliath was intimidating? Yes. So when he comes out to the front line and he mocks the people of Israel, okay, and he says, I'm going to feed your flesh to the birds. And the Israelites, were they like, no, we have the power of God. We're going to win. No, what did the Israelites say? They ran back and they got scared. They were, they were terrified. They were terrified. They saw Goliath and he's so big and he's in all of his physical armor. And they said, we're no match for him. We can't fight him. We don't have armor like that. We're not as strong as he is. We don't have as much muscle as he does, and we don't have as much power as he does. Now, was that the truth? No, it was not the truth. They had God, right? But they believed the lie, okay? They believed the lie, and so they were not prepared for battle. So then David comes up, and David is the youngest brother. He has a whole bunch of brothers, and he's the youngest one. And all of his brothers are out fighting the battle, okay? And David's still back at home. So his dad, David's dad says, listen, I need you to take some bread and some cheese to your brothers because they are fighting the battle, okay? So go bring them some dinner. All right, so David does that. David gets up early in the morning. He leaves the sheep that he's always keeping and he goes and he's gonna take the provisions to his brothers. So he gets there and he sees Goliath taunting the Israelites. They're, he's mocking God. He's mocking them. And David's like, who is this guy? Who's going to kill this guy? And the brothers hear him and the brothers pull back and they say, what are you doing? You've been up with the sheep. You don't even know what's going on around here. Okay. And I want you to listen to this. This is what, this is David's response to King Saul because King Saul calls for David at this point. So David goes up to King Saul, and this is what David says. Let no man's heart fail because of him, talking about Goliath. Your servant will go and fight this Philistine. And Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth, and he has been a man of war from his youth. So what's he saying? David, you're just a young boy, and this guy has been fighting battles since he was a boy, okay? But David said to Saul, your servant, talking about himself, used to keep sheep for his father. And then when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and I struck him and I delivered it out of his mouth. And if he rose against me, I caught him by his beard and I struck him and I killed him. Your servant has struck down lions and bears. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, for he has defied the armies of the living God. And David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. So tell me, what did David just tell Saul? That he said that I, I will fight him and because I know that the Lord will help me. That's exactly right. I know that the Lord goes before me. And if the Lord has delivered me from lions and bears, he'll deliver me from this too. David, what were you? It's like he just kind of like, um, like Goliath's shoulder first. He just kind of like armed up for himself. That's, that is so good. That's exactly right. Jesus is always the one who goes before us and fights our battles. That's good, Callie. Yes, Jude. Do you mean like the David sheep in the that's right. We are like the sheep, right? And David is like Jesus, who is the great shepherd. There's, that's actually going to come up later in the story. So listen really careful, carefully for one of the details there. Okay, so Saul has told David, you can go. But Saul still thinks David needs a little bit of help. Okay, so this is what Saul does. He clothes David with his armor. He puts a helmet of bronze on David's head. He clothes him with a coat of mail. Who had a, a helmet and a coat of mail? Who had these things? That's right, Goliath had these things. And David strapped his sword over his armor, and he tried in vain to go, for he had not tested them. And then David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. 
So do you notice that Saul tried to dress David just like Goliath was dressed? Because for some reason, he was putting his confidence in a physical armor instead of a spiritual armor. So David puts it on and David says, this has not been tested. I know that the Lord God has proven to be true. He's shown me that already in my life. This physical armor, this is not tested. So David takes it off, but David's gonna bring something with him. So listen, David takes his staff in his hand and he chooses five stones from the brook and he put them in his shepherd's pouch. His sling was in his hand and he approached the Philistine. So what did David have? He had the stones and he had the, he had the staff. That's exactly right. Just like a shepherd would have, right? Okay, so let's see what happens. The Philistine moves forward and comes near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. And when the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him for he was but a youth. And the Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by the gods. And the Philistine said to David, come to me and I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and you come to me with a spear and you come to me with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you down and I will cut off your head and I will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beast of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel and that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves not with a sword and a spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hand. So what is David saying? You come to me with all of your physical armor, but I come to you dressed in the armor of our holy God, the living God. All of your gods are dead, Goliath. No one fights for you, but my God is alive and he goes before me and he fights for me. So you may have your helmet and your shield and your spear and all the things that we can see, but I am cloaked. Though my cloak is invisible, though my armor is invisible, it is far more powerful than anything that you have on. So when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line. He wasn't afraid to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and he took out a stone and he slung it and he struck the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and he struck the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in the hand of David. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine. He took his sword, he drew it out of his sheath, and he killed him and cut off his head with it. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. So who won that battle? God won that battle, right? God won that battle through his servant David, that's right. I don't really know. I'm assuming that there was just an opening right here and the, it came with such force that it just plunged right here into this. But I, I don't I don't know all the details behind it. But I know that the stone hit him and I know it went into his head and I know it to be true because it's in here and all these words are true. Now, the last thing that I wanna point out that I think is so beautiful um, is the picture that David shows us of Christ. David um, comes in and how does he go to battle with his what? He has his staff in his hand because he's a shepherd, right? He's watched over his sheep and now he's watching over the people of Israel. And in that same way, Jesus is our great shepherd, okay? He comes in and he, he fights for us as a shepherd. He's over all of his people and he calls his sheep. He says, my sheep hear my voice. They know my voice and they listen and they obey. And so for those who truly follow Jesus, we hear his voice and we obey him and we follow him because he's our great shepherd going to battle for us. Yes. So we were like when he when Jesus comes back, he was like David and Satan fight Goliath and even though he might be intimidating, like God has that Jesus has that staff because he's our shepherd and he's gonna still That's exactly him. right. Jesus is our shepherd and the victory belongs to him. And so the beautiful thing about this story, of course, it's wonderful that David was able to defeat the Philistines. And of course, it was wonderful that this battle happened. But what it's pointing to 
is a greater king who was coming and a greater battle that is coming. And just like David had victory over Goliath, so Jesus has victory over Satan and over sin. It is guaranteed. It is in the bag. Christ has won. And our God is alive. So good. Thank you, Jesus, for that. All right. Um, who wants to close us in prayer? Riley Jean? All right. Let's close us in prayer. Dear God, thank you for today. Jesus, thank you for um, this morning. Jesus, thank you for letting David kill Goliath and show that you are one um, holy um, God, that you will always keep your promises, and God, that you will always listen to us no matter what we've done or what we say, God. Um, thank you for being there for us. We love you. Um, thank you for being our friend. In the precious and wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Amen.